you received your uflow in the post uh, and it will come in something like this now don't worry i've taken everything out of the boxes so it should be super quick you don't have to watch me unbox stuff for half an hour but effectively this is a box it comes in everything's packaged up nicely um, it's all got its own little bags or boxes or, or, or whatever right so this is what you get we go through everything first then we'll set her up and then we'll do some we're trying to force carbonate some water just to see how it works so the first one we're going to look at is uh, this cool sleeve uh, that comes with the starter kit and the idea is that it's going to keep your U-Flow nice and cool. Now this has got water in it um, which has been in the fridge for the last 24 hours or so and the reason being is that when you're trying to carbonate, force carbonate or just generally carbonate your beer it needs to be as cold as possible. Um, so ideally my fridge is set to around two degrees um, and you want it to be as cold as possible because that's really going to help the carbonation process so here she is she's got a little jacket on perfect carry handles whatever so we come back to her in a bit let's see what else you get so you get a little box with your tap head on it put that in there you get another box that contains uh, the top piece with your quick connect um, gas and uh, beer uh, couplers then you get another box which contains your pressure gauge um, regulator um, your pressure regulator um, and then you'll get free co2 um, this has already been screwed in because I've actually um, already set this up before just so I know exactly how it works um, but I'll be showing you what you do with the, the CO2, some spare O-rings, uh, a spare O-ring for the inside of the regulator. So you also get this uh, fill-in cap. Um, I'm actually going to create my own just because I think this is quite wide. Um, so we'll do that in the next video, it's fine. Um, then you get some instructions. So I've read this a couple of times over, make sure you do. And the big thing that they highlight in red a few times is to make sure that when you're opening up the um, gas regulator it doesn't go into the red so you never want it to go above 22 and a half psi um, really you don't really want it to go above 20 you don't need it to go above 20 so just make sure you keep an eye on that because if it does go into the red um, it could break it and i believe they say that it's not covered in their warranty if you do break it by you know, for through mal mal use, I guess. Anyway, so instructions. Get rid of that. A uh, little card saying about perfect pint time. Blah 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 blah. Get rid of that. Cool. So we're going to start with a regulator. Uh, as I said, this part uh, comes uh, by itself, and then you'd screw this in. Now, before you screw this in, you'd probably want to connect it to the coupler. You want to make sure that the regulator is connected to the white coupler. You've got a white and a black. So we're just going to take this off and then we're going to screw her in. Uh, now I've actually bought some food grade lubricant and I will be putting lubricant on all of my joints um, just to help the seal and to make sure that things uh, stay nice and tight. But um, it hasn't arrived yet so we're going to have to go without for the moment. So. You don't have to really force this in just make sure it's kind of hand tight that's fine uh, so that's my regulator with the coupler so that's good to go next we we'll look at the uh, pour in tap so the first thing you need to do just unscrew this a little bit uh, and this will become apparent in a moment and then screw in the handle of the tap like so now if this is screwed in too far, then you won't actually be able to move the tap forward and back. So you just need to make sure that you've got a bit of play there. Um, it doesn't need to be loads, but just enough so the tap can move forward and backwards nicely. So that looks good to me. Okay, and then next part is this piece here, which would screw in here. But before you do that, you actually want to screw this onto your coupler. So black seal is the, the coupler for the beer or the tap and we just want to screw her in nice and tight so again you don't have to really force this um, I think 
just you know finger tight spine okay nice and now to make sure that your tap is going to kind of be vertical when you connect it you then want to screw this piece on here and when you screw that in you want to make sure that your tap and the regulator or the coupler sorry so the tap and the coupler are nice and aligned now this did get catch me off first time round, so just keep an eye on that you can actually turn it turn it turn it make sure it's nicely aligned so that looks good to me like so and then you can use this little handy tool that they provide just to tighten this up Okay, cool, I think that looks good to me. Nice and tight. So that's the tap done. Then we've got the main piece here. So this is gonna go uh, inside the middle when we take this cap off. Um, you get a cable here and I've already cut this to size. You wanna just be just above, I guess, the, the top here because you want a little bit of slack. And also the bottom piece needs to be at a uh, 90 degree angle I guess um, not flat because it can get stuck on the bottom so just at an angle so let's put this in here and the other thing you want to do with uh, the top valve cap that I've got in my hand at the moment is to make sure that all of these are nicely tight um, and again you can use the little tool that they provide to help you so that is in Think. yeah so that's that's nicely in that's done um, just a couple of other bits you get this kind of little drip tap thing that will go on top of your bottom of your taps that's fine get a couple of cleaning bits fine a handy tool and your drip mat which hopefully will come in useful in a bit so I've unscrewed the top cap and I've screwed the uh, the top valves on uh, whatever this piece is called and now we're going to add the gas coupler so the beer always goes in the middle and to the right hand side the one at an angle is going to be your gas coupler so you just pull up and push down and then it will just lock in like that so I'm just going to turn her here now the dial's currently showing uh, off which is fine um, or zero and I'm just going to increase the PSI to around 10 so you just slowly turn 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 until you hear the gas releasing there you go okay and then what you do is then to purge the oxygen that's at the top you just pull this quick release so it bumps down to about five. So, okay, that's done now. Just again another little bump. Okay, perfect. So that's the oxygen out, which is good. Um, and that's the first thing you'd want to do. And now we're going to try and force carb uh, the the water that's in here now before we do that I'm just going to decrease uh, the regulator so there's no more oxygen going in and I'm going to attach I'm going to again purge it from from gas cool and I'm going to just attach this tap and we're going to see if we can actually get uh, uh, a pour coming out to make sure that it's all pouring and set up correctly and then once we've done that then we'll go for the the whole force carbon in stage. So I've got myself a glass and we're going to just see if she pours. So you always want to have a little bit of pressure so I'm just going to increase it to around 4 psi just slowly turning this until you can hear some gas going in. There you go. 
and that's around four now so there should be some pressure pushing down and then hopefully we're going to get some water come out of this oh there we go nice okay so that seems to be pouring nice So I don't know if you can see, but that's, that's, there's no carbonation in there yet. Okay, but that's our test, I guess. We'll leave that there. Now, to force carbonate. So I'm going to take off the... And this could get a bit messy, so I should really be in the kitchen for this, but that's fine. So I'm going to take off the tap, first of all. I knew that was going to happen, but it's only water, so that's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to increase the uh, PSI to around 20, or just above 15, actually. Let's see how we go. So it's just above 15. I'm going to then turn off the regulator valve, so that's off. And then I'm going to just turn her on her side, and I'm just going to gently rock her from side to side. Now, because the water's cold, it should encourage the CO2 going in. What you could also do is you could um, just, you know, fill her up to 15 PSI, then put her in the fridge, leave her overnight, and that will um, carbonate, uh, you know, itself just in the fridge. Um, but because we're going to try and force carbonate, so go from completely flat to hopefully carbonated water, um, I'm going to literally just take her to just above 15, then turn off the regulator valve, then rock her side to side for about five minutes, look at the valve again, it will go down to maybe let's say 10 or five, however long, put her up to 15 again, and then just rinse and repeat. So you can leave me here rocking and I'll come back to you once I'm done. So I've been rocking and carving for a little while now and I must have gone up to just about 15, uh, about four times. Um, and, and then again, just shake, 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 shake. So um, we're looking all right. Um, I'm gonna just put on the tap again. Okay. Now, for the moment of truth, um, if you enjoy the content here at Action Frank, then uh, smash that like button. I'd really, really appreciate it. And also stick around to the end because I'll show you uh, what beer I'm going to be putting this, uh, putting in here for the first time. Anyway, let's get cracking. So that's our control. You can see that is just. A uh, glass of water, and let's see what uh, what we're looking at here. So I'm just going to increase the pressure just so it's just above two or three. It doesn't need to be high, and then we're going to pour. Okay, so that's a little bit carbonated, but I think we're going to need to go again. So I'm going to uh, turn this off, remove the CO2 cartridge because I think it's dead. Now keep in mind, I was using this yesterday uh, and obviously today, so it's not just, you know, what I've been doing here, I've been playing around with this quite a lot. So 
we'll get rid of that one and we'll put a new one in okay and that is in nicely okay and again we increase the pressure So that's about five now. So let's see if this comes out any better. Now, you can't quite see, or I don't know if you can see, but that is definitely carbonated. <sighs> yeah, that's definitely carbonated. Um, for me, I'd probably carbonate it some more, but at the end of the day, we're just using water here, um, and I don't want to waste this CO2. So, yeah, I think that's all good. Um, nice and tight you can't hear any leaks um yeah i think that's a that's a win um now before i go let me get what i'm, I'm going to be putting this what beer we're going to be using for this next time around <coughs> so i bought this from amazon uh the link's in the description and it is a 52 north woodford woodford's brewery and it's called voltage Session IPA, 4.5% alcohol. Um, again, this has been in the fridge, uh, so nice and cool. Uh, and uh, the main reason I'm gonna be putting the beer from here into the U-Flow is just for a test, really, just to see how it works. Um, the next thing I'll do after putting uh, this this beer and drinking it from the U-Flow is probably put some Pinter uh, brews in there. Anyway, so that's it for this uh, video. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you want to know more about the Uflow, um, I'll put the uh, playlist uh, up there. And uh, if you want to see what's next on the channel, then I'll, I'll put a card up there. Cool. Cheers.